Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will explain all the different render properties in Clo 3D by showing you how to render this cocktail dress. Rendering in Clo 3D produces a high quality image of your garment for sharing with your collaborators. This tutorial will show you how to easily apply different backgrounds, lighting, and camera settings for showcasing your designs. Check out my Patreon in the description below for the project files used in this tutorial, as well as a written step-by-step -step guide, project ideas, and one-on-one -on -one support for advancing your skills. Let's get started. All right, we're going to start with a new project. So file, new project right there. And then we're going to open up the custom avatar I made. So that's under file, open, uh, avatar, and then navigate to the folder that you downloaded from my Patreon, and then go ahead and double click that. And then uh, we're going to add the custom garment that I made as well. So file, open, garment, and then in the same folder, you're going to have the garment right here. So double click that and it's going to ask you if you want to maintain the current avatar size and pose or open the size and pose from the garment file, but they're the same. So it doesn't matter what you'd pick and just click. Okay. All right, here's this fancy schmancy little cocktail dress that I made. And right now you can't really see what the materials are because I've frozen it. So, uh, but it's a bunch of these, these little discs and over in the side here, you can see that I made a material or a fabric for each different type of material display. So for example, this is matte and in the property editor under the fabric, you can see the type is fabric matte, shiny, fabric shiny silk satin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I've applied them in fun patterns to this garment so that I can showcase all of these different textures and how they render. Some of these textures kind of show up in the 3D window here, but uh, you can kind of see there's something different about how this, these are reflecting light versus, you know, down here. But there are some materials that won't show up and most of them won't show up well until you do open the render view. So for example, uh, the fur, the gem, the glass, the glitter, those that say render only, you can only see them in render view. And to access render view, we're going to go to, uh, in the file menu, we're going to click render and then click render again. And this window will pop up and it says click here to start the interactive render. So we're just gonna click. And when it opens, we can start to see what's uh, going on here. So here's the iridescent, the glitter, the fur, uh, the glass, the gem, et cetera, et cetera, um, on all these different little things. Uh, if it's not showing up for you, then you're going to want to go into the 3D display options and make sure that you have thick textured surface selected. I'd like to go ahead and introduce you to some of these uh, icons here in the render window. So uh, as we remember, the object browser is where we can see different things in the 3D scene and the property editor is where we edit them. Right now, it's just still showing me all the different fabrics, which isn't necessarily useful right now because we're not editing the pattern. So what I want to do is actually, I want to go to this, uh, this icon right here that looks like, I don't know, a, a list of things. And um, go ahead and click that. And it, this is showing you some of the thing, like everything that's in the, the scene that maybe isn't fabric or buttons or whatever. And we're going to click the drop down um, for environment. And then we can see there's an option for camera and there's an option for light. So if we look down in camera, it says, here's the camera that exists in the scene. And that is like, we're the cameraman when we navigate around or the camera person, when we navigate around the 3D space, like we're always looking through the camera. And then the light, uh, there are a couple different options for light. There's 3D and these are the lights that are in, you know, over here in the 3D scene while we're working. Those are our work lights. So let's leave those alone because they're fine. But then there's render lights. And so these are the lights that are actually in um, our render space that are going to affect our final render. We'll get back to lighting in a little bit, but I want to go ahead and go one at a time through the rest of these icons and we'll hit it when we hit render right render light properties. So these uh, options here, uh, you know, simulation properties, render image video properties, etc. cetera, the, you can find them here, but they're also the same thing as these icons here. So you can see when I click the, the different icons, um, the different um, th things are selected. And this one right here is just simulation properties. So, I mean, if you wanna affect the gravity and or um, <laughs> other, um, other things here, but we're, we're just gonna leave this alone for now. 
All right, in this toolbar on the side of the render window, the first button here is interactive render. That's what happened when we clicked start interactive render, it activated it. And all that means is as I, we're, you know, moving things around or changing things in the th in the 3D space, it's live um it's happening live. Like we can see the results happen live in the interactive render. Uh to turn that off, you're going to say stop render. And you do need to turn it off for when you're actually going to render an image, which is this button right here, final render. And the final render is the image that the computer is going to calculate, spend some time calculating the light and really making a high quality image. What we see here in the preview, you can see that it's still you know pretty noisy. I just turned um, interactive render back on. You can see it's still pretty noisy and we can't see the fur very well. It's not that great of an image. Image. It, it will do the trick though in some cases and if you do like this image here that you see exactly the way it is then you can actually either copy it and then you know paste it into Photoshop or whatever or you can use this button that, say, that says save current image and find a place on your computer to just save this image without going through an extensive rendering process um, and then this button just says show me where the, all of the where all of the uh, renders are that I'm saving um, and which I'll get back to how to pick that in a little bit. Moving down from there, let's go ahead and start inputting some uh, render settings. Uh, this is image slash video properties. We're going to click that one right there. And I'm going to walk you through all of these settings so you have a, a sense of what's going on here. All right, this first thing here is uh, actually if you have settings for any of these that you like, you can save them and then open them again in another folder. We're not going to worry about that for right now. The next we have image or video. Uh, so here's we're going to we can either select image. It's either going to render one image or it'll render a turntable of images, which is pretty cool because it'll basically rotate the perform or the avatar around and then you can make a, a GIF or a GIF or what GIF or whatever. And then animation is when you can render a full animation. I'm not going to get to these two today, but I will make a video for those later and I will link it here when they're ready. So for now, just choose image. The next option is viewpoint. So we can either use current view, which is, you know, whatever we're looking at here that it'll just render exactly what we see, or we can choose custom views. And when you choose custom views, this window pops up over here that says custom view and we can just start you know moving our little camera around and adding views so if we like this one we can go ahead and click the camera icon uh, which is this tiny little camera here and it adds it as a custom view now if we like move away and we want to get back to that view all we have to do is double click it and we'll go back and now when we render it's not going to render whatever we're looking at currently it's going to render this specific camera position all right, so we have that on custom views. Colorway is current. Uh, there are different ways to set colorways in Clo 3D, and this is just saying uh, you can actually render all of your colorways at once. Um, we don't have colorways, so we're just going to keep moving on. Image size is pretty simple. It's just the size of the output render. Right now it's set to 640 and 480, but we're going to set it to 1920 by 1080, which is a little bit of a higher quality image. We can see a little bit more detail. It's also going to take longer to render. Orientation is portrait. We could change that to landscape, but that would be silly because our person is in portrait. Then it gives you the option to change the pix the aspect ratio uh, individually. And if you just want to change one number, you can check maintain ratio and it'll change it proportionally. Next is resolution. Let's leave that at 300. Now we're going to get into a little bit more of the creative options. So the first thing here is color, which right now is set to white. So we can go ahead and choose um, a color. I'm going to type in 28282E because I like the way that this gray looks against the other gray. And then I just hit apply and close. The next is the texture. And if we press this little icon down here, not the trash icon, but this little grid icon, it gives us a couple of different options for vignettes. And let's go ahead and choose vignette number two. The next option is transparency and that uh, is if, if you turn that on it's actually quite kind of nice because it won't render a background at all and then if you want to put your avatar or your garment directly into a doc like a photoshop file then you can edit the background independently for now let's leave that off and let's also leave off crop the final render all right the next set of settings is the save settings so file name just leave it on project name there's no you can change the name later if you want file path and for exporting so if you click this folder you can choose where you want to save your um, file and i recommend just using your desktop or finding the folder that uh, this um, this this uh, tutorials files are in 
Next is image format. Let's leave that on PNG, especially if you have a transparent background. And last to save HTML, let's just leave that off. All right, the next set of settings have entirely to do with the camera. So that's this camera icon right here, camera properties. Let's go ahead and click that. And our settings, again, you can load camera settings in. Um, you can name, rename your camera, I guess. All right, the first one here is field of view. So that is um, essentially how wide your lens is roughly. So the I guess the larger the number, the wider the lens, and then the closer the number, the shallower the, shallower the lens. So let's go ahead and set this to 10. Next is view orientation. And uh, so this is basically the position of the camera. You can either, ch you, I mean, you really don't need to do this because you can just, you know, move it around yourself. But if you like to type in numbers like I do, you can either choose spherical, which makes the camera always rotate around the person, or you can choose absolute, which makes the camera like only pan up and down and left and right. Uh, spherical is, makes more sense to me. So let's leave that on negative a thousand. Horizontal angle, let's do maybe negative 10. And then uh, vertical angle, what about five? The next option is a uh, clipping plane. And this is basically, all right, this is what clipping plane is. If you, the near is 100. So that's as close as you can get to an object before it disappears. And this, there you go, that it disappeared because I got too close. And then far is how far away you can zoom out from an object before it disappears. So this isn't not really affecting us. So we can just zoom into a place that we like and uh, keep it there. The last setting here is physical camera. This is pretty cool. If you turn this on, it gives you more camera settings. So we have exposure, ISO, F number, uh, all of these things. So if you are a camera person and this excites you, you could turn that on and have as much fun as you want. But for simplicity, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off for now. Now that we have a view we like, let's go ahead and add it as a custom view. So again, up here in the custom view window, just click the camera icon. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, old one too because I don't want it to spend time rendering out that one. All right, now we get to look at light properties and that is under this light bulb right here in the render display. All right, okay, so we can load your own lighting schematic, which is actually kind of nice if you get something that you really like. And then it's just gonna start us out, it's giving us some presets. So if I click the preset drop down, it's even showing me what these look like, which is pretty cool. And the, the, the presets are just gonna go ahead and set up some lights in your scene to start with. And you can, you know, pick any one of them and then go from there. Let's go ahead and click studio underscore vivid and that's a pretty fun lighting schematic and so this uh this uh preset just put a dome light into our render just one light and it's a dome light and what the dome light does is it's an environment map um which looks like this that's basically where it's light it, it's like projecting light where it's dark, it's it's not. Um, it's pretty cool, but imagine that this map is set up in a dome now on the around my avatar. And what I can do is, you know, I can change the light intensity of the, of the dome light. And so that makes it brighter. Actually, I kind of like maybe two, let's leave that on two. And then um, we can do light angle as well. So if we adjust this, it's basically rotating the dome around the avatar. Uh, so let's go ahead and put that maybe at like 125. And I like this because it's like, you can see it's catching a lot of this light and um, here, and uh, it gets really showcasing the different materials in this, um, in this garment. So. The next option is lock to camera. This is cool because if you turn this on, uh, you can basically, you can move her around and the light, the, the dome will move with her. So you don't have to keep adjusting the light. If it's off, it, she'll move and the lighting will change and then you'll have to keep rotating the, rotating the light as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click my custom view and get her back to where we started there. All right, ground shadow. Uh, this is really funny, actually. I don't know why this is such a small image. It's right here. It's a little, I don't know, a movie, <laughs> a little movie thing. Um, if you click that, it will turn on the shadow. All right, it's a little funny because, and I don't know why, but when I recorded this pose for this avatar, she's standing off the ground and I don't know how to put her on the ground. So <laughs> the shadow is a little bit far away, but it's still nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on. All right, the last set of settings here is our render properties, and that is this icon right here. We're gonna go ahead and click that. 
And all right, so this is where it really matters what kind of computer you are working on. Right now, I'm working on a PC. If you're looking at the uh, worksheet that it's included on my Patreon, you can see that all of the screenshots are actually done on my Mac. And a main difference between the two is that my PC has a GPU option, which basically is a setting that will make the rendering go a lot faster and it'll look a lot better. My Mac does not have that setting, it only has CPU. So if you have a Mac, you're gonna have to click CPU and that's the end of the story. If you have a PC like I do, go ahead and click GPU and we're going to leave these uh, next following settings alone. All right, so uh, finish conditions. The the property that has the most to do with how good your render looks versus how noisy it is is the noise threshold right here and if you're working on a mac you should i mean you just leave it at a 0.05 but i know that i can actually render faster on my computer or my pc so i'm going to make that 0.01 and there is a fall off point like if you keep making this number lower it it's not going to make it look better enough to be worth the extra rendering time. So just start at like 0 0.05 or 0 0.1. And if you don't like the way it looks, you know, in increase it from there. Um, but or if it's taking like way too long, then, you know, change it for sure. And then max render time, it just says like if you've got a really high noise threshold, that's going to take longer than 20 minutes. It's going to stop at 20 minutes. Um, you can just leave that at 20 because I happen to know that this is probably only going to take like one minute, if not like 45 seconds. All right. Global map. Um, if you've added seam puckering to your garment um, up here or, you know, with the seam puckering tool, you can adjust how much the puckering is looking using this scale here, but we didn't, so we won't. All right, quality is, uh, we have light, so the quality of light and the quality of material. All right now they're set at medium. You can leave them there. If you're working with like really complicated materials, like uh, I think Clo 3D has a few listed on their website of like, these won't look good unless you render them on very high, then you can change it to very high. But for the most part, just leave it on medium. And the last set of properties are right here. Color mapping. Just leave those alone. Don't even touch them. <laughs> it is not worth explaining now and you won't have to use them in your workflows as a theater technician. All right, with all of our settings uh, typed in, we can go ahead and start our render. So first we need to stop the interactive render. So click stop render, and then we can click play on the final render. And it's going to just think about it for a little bit. Down here, we can see the progress. It's showing the time it's taking and then the percentage. And uh, so, you know, 10 seconds in, I'm 18%. So this isn't going to be too bad. If you're rendering this and you get to like a minute and it hasn't done like a quarter of the rendering, you know, it's going to take longer than four minutes to render. You might want to stop and adjust your settings. All right. Once it's done rendering this, uh, it'll say image video has been saved and I can open the folder to where it's saved. And I can see that's right here and uh, it looks pretty good um i might go ahead and play a little bit more um she looks a little plasticky i might play with the lighting settings more but um ultimately like this is a skill on unto its own and uh it's worth playing around with this project file is really fun because you can just you know assign all of these different materials to all of the different things and maybe um having a lot of fun so i recommend you know just playing around and exploring and see what makes it, uh, what, what looks good um and in general just like when you're working with uh when you're working with drafting patterns, using a reference photo for image will help guide your uh, process. So with that, you can go ahead and share that image with your director and they'll be so impressed and you'll look so cool. And I will see you next time.